At the Next Door Project, we provide a range of services to households who are threatened with homelessness as a result of the changes to their housing benefit. Now, the new housing benefit caps mean that anybody whose rent exceeds the amount of housing benefit they receive will have to move. But more than having to move to a property a few streets down, they're going to have to move to more affordable accommodation, which means they're going to have to move to cheaper areas of London or wherever they are in the country. Um, now, this is going to have um, manifold um, consequences for often quite vulnerable families. Um, it's going to mean, for example, that people will have to move their ch children out of school. Um, it means they will lose um, the connections that they have in terms of family, friends and support. Um, and also, because around 50% of our clients have at least one member of the household who's disabled, you know, we're also talking about access to special educational needs schools, um, and to mental health services, um, to particular clinics that are based in hospitals. Um, so this is really going to be quite damaging for a lot of families and a lot of individuals. It used to be that anybody who turned 25 could claim for a one bedroom flat. Now the government has increased that age limit up to 35, which means that there are a significant number of 25 to 34, five, 34 year olds. Um, we're talking upwards of 60,000 nationally and around 12,000 in London. Who, are going to, who, because it's such a significant drop, are going to have to move from their one-bed flats into shared accommodation. And this poses a different set of challenges. Um, obviously, quite a significant number of those people will have joint custody of a child. And as, as they are not the primary carer, um, it's going to be very difficult for them to have visitation of their kids when they're you know, living in shared accommodation. It's also going to be problematic for very vulnerable tenants who um, you know, are going to have to move into shared accommodation with, with strangers um, and we are very concerned that there might be some exploitation that happens as a result of that. People claiming benefits for grossly expensive properties in central London. This is something that the government and the media have made a lot of but I think it's really really important that people are aware that actually the number of people claiming these exorbitant amounts are actually extremely small. So in terms of the number of people, for example, who are claiming, you know, as George Osborne, the Chancellor claimed over £100,000 a year of the taxpayers' money, it's actually only 20, 20 of these households in the whole of the United Kingdom. You know, what you will find if you look at these cuts is that the big money, the really, really big savings to the taxpayer, are the welfare reforms which are ha happening nationally because obviously changes which affect millions of people save more money than the few thousand people who live in, in boroughs like Westminster. What are the alternatives? Well, they do exist. Um, we could, for example, reintroduce rent controls like we had in the early 80s, um, like they have across the continent and also in a lot of the major cities in America. We could also look to, to build more social housing which would push rents down and decrease waiting lists and provide for affordable accommodation for families. We could also look at using community land trusts and the new community right to build, which would involve uh, community groups leasing land, which is the expensive part, off of local authorities and then building, which is the cheap part, on that land and then allow turning that into affordable accommodation. However, the government's not really into any of these ideas because none of them are market-led, market-driven. Okay, so what can you do personally? Well, a lot of what needs to be done is challenging perceptions, challenging the stigma and the scaremongering that goes on in the media and by government. So you should speak to your elected representatives, your MPs, your local councillors, but also you know, family, friends. If you hear people talking about these people in a derogatory manner and you know that that's untrue, then I think you know, we all have a moral obligation to challenge those assumptions and those beliefs whenever we find them.